Canada's carbon tax is the issue that just won't go away. Pierre Polyev's recent motion to put a pause on the tax was defeated despite him having the NDP on his side for once. The vote eventually came down to just one party, which chose to side with Trudeau in his plan to divide Canada. Those separatists, as Polyev called them, might soon realize they chose the wrong side, as premiers across Canada are now joining hands against Trudeau's carbon tax. With Trudeau rapidly losing allies, one might wonder when he will finally wake up and see how his policies are damaging the Canada we know and love. But the time for remediation has passed, as Trudeau is facing opposition from all sides. The motion to axe the tax may have been defeated this time, but the carbon tax fight will be taken to the voters in the next election. So why did the Bloc Québécois vote against the motion? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. The motion from Pierre Polyev to pause carbon taxes on all home heating, unfortunately, was voted down on Monday's question period, with the final count being 186 against it to only 135 in favor. Pierre's motion ultimately aimed to extend the carbon tax break that 3% of the population already gets for home heating oil to other types of home heating as well. It's a pretty reasonable request, right? But unfortunately, it didn't get the support it needed. While a motion wouldn't have actually forced the government to change anything, as it wasn't a formal requirement, that kind of majority support might have created some real political pressure for the government to reconsider. But the bloc killed the motion by deciding to side with the Liberal Party. The Liberals have enough seats on their own, at 158, to outvote the Conservatives and NDP combined. Those two parties announced beforehand that they'd be joining forces to back Pierre's motion, but together, they still only had 142 seats. This meant the BQ were pretty much the swing vote Polyev needed. Whoever they decided to side with would win the vote. But in the end, they threw their support behind Trudeau and the Liberals instead of lending their votes to the opposition. So even with the Conservatives and NDP paired up, it wasn't enough to pass the vote. The bloc's backing was crucial, and rather than defending Canadians from the carbon tax, they used their power to defeat Pierre's common-sense proposal. Even the NDPs, who are more often than not at the Conservatives' throats, saw that Polyev's motion was logical and, unlike Trudeau's divisive policies, was actually aimed at the benefit and equity of all Canadians. NDP MP Peter Julian stated that the motion today is for once and on a crazy climate-denying motion. It just refers to the equity of ensuring that all types of home heating and in all regions actually can benefit from that. When defending his party's decision to back the proposal, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, who voted virtually, told reporters that while he was reluctant, his party voted yet to reject the Liberals' approach. He said, We reject absolutely the Liberals' divisive plan. We think it's unfair. It pits regions against each other, and so we're voting to reject the Liberals' divisive plan. After the vote, in a press conference outside the House of Commons, Polyev referred to the Bloc Québécois as separatists and Trudeau's carbon tax coalition, who signed on with Trudeau to divide Canadians into two separate classes. With the separatists to divide our country, given that the NDP was forced to flip-flop on Trudeau's plan to quadruple the tax, he had to find a new partner to keep him in power and avoid this non-confidence vote from passing. And who was there to save him? The separatists. So he's now signed on with the separatists to divide Canadians into two separate classes, those who will have to pay carbon tax on their home heat and a small minority who will get a pause from the pain. All of Trudeau's MPs sold out their constituents and voted to make their home heating more expensive. Trudeau and his costly MPs have divided our country raised our taxes, and pushed our people out into the cold. So why did Quebec vote against the motion? Well, it might be because they have a special deal on the carbon tax of their own. While the rest of the provinces pay 14 cents per liter of gas, Quebec has its own cap and trade system, which allows them to pay about 10 cents per liter of gas. A week before the vote, BQ leader Yves Francois delightfully expressed that he's so glad this tax, whatever the conservatives say, does not apply in Quebec. So more than anything, Quebec's vote was merely symbolic. As he expressed, the motion would have no impact on Quebec. But instead of voting with the Conservatives and the NDPs, Yves Francois decided to join hands with Trudeau to further divide Canada. The environment is not a fancy thing that you entertain between crises. It is in and by itself a very important issue, and we have to be constant and patient and determined in those matters. He stated, the question many of you might be wondering is, would the bloc have voted differently if the same federal tax that is imposed on the rest of the provinces was imposed on them too? That seems highly unlikely as premiers across Canada have joined hands in criticizing Trudeau's carbon tax. As Manitoba Premier Wab Kinyu said, the carbon tax is not the silver bullet when it comes to climate change. 
Premiers representing all provinces got together at a news conference in Halifax on Monday, and all except for two said Trudeau should extend his carbon price exemption to all home heating fuels, not just heating oil. The people have clearly spoken at this point, and the mere unanimous outcry from premiers across Canada should be loud enough to make Trudeau's liberal government set aside politics for once and do what's right for Canada. But of course, they are too deaf to hear common sense at this point. Federal Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo coldly responded to the Premier's calls for changes by telling the Canadian press that no other changes would be made to the federal carbon pricing system under his watch. As long as I'm the Environment Minister, there will be no more exemptions to carbon pricing, he said. The words of Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe come to mind when we see the Minister's harsh response to Canada's Premier's. As Mo previously said, his province's relationship with Ottawa under Trudeau has clearly become combative rather than collaborative. Relationship, it's much more combative, um, and it isn't in the best interest of Canadians. And what we're seeing uh, today is very, very divisive policies, and how those policies are being implemented in the carbon tax crisis that Canadians are facing due to the Prime Minister. Federal provincial relations, after almost a decade of Trudeau, are nearing a breaking point. This unprecedented level of disconnection shows the damage Trudeau has done. Yet he doesn't even show up to question period as MPs vote on such a critical matter. He instead hides and divides, as Polyev said. The Prime Minister is in Ottawa today, so the question is for him. Uh, he is panicked now and put a pause on the carbon tax for 3% of Canadians in ridings where his polls are plummeting and his MPs are revolting. Also revolting were the comments of a Liberal uh, uh, Rural Affairs Minister who stated that other Canadians would have got a pause on the, the pain if they had elected more Liberals. Yet, Northern Ontarians did elect Liberals. Sure. So the question for the Prime Minister, will he allow a free vote for his Northern MPs on our common sense motion to keep the heat on and take the tax off? Yeah. In response to Pauli of criticizing Trudeau's absence, Jonathan Wilkinson, Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, retorted evasively that Polyev was the one hiding and that he had no real plan for the climate. The only person who is hiding in this chamber is the leader of the op official opposition who is hiding the fact that he does not either does not believe in climate change or he, or he certainly doesn't think it's very important. He has not spoken the words climate change since he was elected and he has no plan. At some point, he needs to tell Canadians, what is your plan to address the climate crisis? Then why is Polyev the one standing in the House of Commons doing his job while Trudeau is nowhere to be seen? Contrary to Wilkinson's misleading diversion, Polyev has proved over and over again that he has a better plan for the climate than Trudeau's divisive, far-reaching one. We've already said we will green light green projects like small modular nuclear reactors, hydroelectric dams, uh, tidal, and wa tidal wave power, and other emissions-free energy that will lead to a massive boom in the clean energy that goes onto our grids and powers our future. We said we will speed up the approval of lithium, graphite, cobalt, and other mines that will be necessary for the electric future. That, that is only possible if you get government out of the way and speed up approvals to green light, green projects. That's a common sense plan. Although the vote on Monday ended in defeat for Conservatives, it's not the end of this issue as more and more Premiers and MPs will likely join forces against Trudeau and his Liberals to axe the tax. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Canada will win in its fight against Trudeau's discriminatory carbon tax? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.